In this video, I will share with you how you can get rid of anxiety with food. I will also share with you supplements that can reduce stress and make you calmer. I want to start by giving you some long-term solutions that will make you less anxious and less stressed over time. There are two main mineral deficiencies that lead to stress. One of them is magnesium, the second one is vitamin D3. Of course, then there are B vitamins, but more on these later, because these can also work as a short-term solution, right? When you pop some B vitamins, they will decrease your stress on that day. With magnesium and vitamin D, you unfortunately will have to wait for maybe a month until your nutrient deficiency gets fixed. But why not start fixing the nutrient deficiencies now, right? So I encourage you to supplement with magnesium in form of citrate or glycinate. Glycinate is better, citrate is cheaper. And I encourage you to take vitamin D3, around two to 5,000 IUs per day until you fix your deficiency. And with magnesium, I think supplementing with four to 800 milligrams a day is optimal. I will put links in the description to both of these. I don't want to seem like a sellout, but the brand really matters typically. And you don't have to use my links if you don't want to. Just make sure that it's a good type and a good brand. Fermented foods also are incredible for fighting stress and anxiety in the long run, generally. That's because there is a huge connection between the levels of stress that you have and your gut. Because your gut is where all the uh, neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin and GABA that makes you less stressed are created. Fermented foods don't work for everybody and if you have some sort of bacterial overgrowth like SIBO or Candida, then I would stay away from these. But fixing your gut is a big part of reducing stress through your food. Ashwagandha and ginseng are both amazing herbs in the long run and in the short term. I've read some reports of people who take ashwagandha daily and they are complaining after a year of taking it that they have too little stress and that they have no anxiety and no social anxiety and it becomes boring for them. I honestly don't think ashwagandha is that strong for most of us, but it is incredible. And herbs in general are great for reducing stress. So stuff like turmeric and rosemary, these herbs typically put stress on your body, but it's a short-term stress that allows you to create boundaries and protect you from stress long-term. Be it oxidative stress, but also chronic stress and anxiety. Now, when it comes to some instant solutions, when it comes to reducing stress and anxiety, I found some to be very effective. So when you are about to face a stressful situation, be it an interview for your job, or I don't know, public speaking, which many people are afraid of, then this is what I would take. I would either take B vitamins or get a lot of B vitamins from my food. So I would either eat a lot of liver, or I would take methylated B complex, or I would take liver supplements, which also contain other stuff like uh, vitamin D, and vitamin K, which also is amazing for fighting stress. Vitamin K2, by the way, is more of a long-term vitamin, but with B vitamins, you wanna take these before you face the situation. And your needs for most B vitamins go up when you get stressed. That applies to both physical stress and mental stress. I would also eat a lot of protein before your interview or public speaking or whatever. And the reason for that are two amino acids found in protein. One is L-tryptophan or tryptophan, and the second one is tyrosine. I don't know about the other amino acids, but these two help you fight stress significantly. That's why food like eggs and meat calms you down. Rice is also good, and the reason is because it contains GABA, gamma amino butyric acid which is a neurotransmitter, which is produced by your gut, as we talked about, but it can also get in your body endogenously. I'm sorry, exogenously. So rice is one way to do that. Then there are probably other grains that have GABA in them. Then white tea is a significant source of GABA, but you can also get GABA supplements. GABA in a supplemental form used to be called fenibut. And it is one of the most powerful nootropics 
out there. I believe it's actually banned in some countries. But don't worry, it is not dangerous for you. It might, however, over time cause some neurotransmitter imbalances. So I would own it a GABA when you are facing a stressful situation or when you are really stressed and you are about to go to bed. I would pair GABA with 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan. And the reason for that is because it is the byproduct of tryptophan that is produced from tryp tryptophan and that really calms you down. You can also supplement with L-tryptophan instead of 5-HTP, but I find 5-HTP to be more effective because it doesn't the conversion from L-tryptophan to 5-HTP doesn't have to happen. But I would also not take it daily and I would take it maybe two times a week maximum. L-theanine, however, is something that you can take daily. It's an extract from green tea that works well with caffeine. So if you drink caffeine, you should pair these two. And even if you don't drink caffeine, L-theanine is great for calming you down. Cacao also is amazing. Same can be said about dark chocolate, but be aware of brands that sell dark chocolate that is less than 80, even 90% black. Because the less cacao there is, the more soy lecithins and sugar there is. And another nutritional strategy to cope with stress is alcohol, right? Alcohol, however, only works in the short term. And over time, it makes you more anxious and more stressed. At least that's what I found for myself. I've actually been sober for like 14 months now. And I'm never, ever going to alcohol ever again. Because over time, it does make you uh, feel less confident and more stressed. At least that's how I feel about it. I don't know about weed. I cannot talk about this plant a lot on my channel because otherwise I will get demonetized. But it also is a great way to cope with stress for many people. And long term, it is not nearly as bad as alcohol is. Now, just like there are some things that you want to eat and that you want to be supplementing with, to cope with stress, there are also some things that you have to avoid. For example, simple carbohydrates like bread and pasta, and specifically one type of carbohydrate that is sugar. With bread and pasta, most people will be just fine. And some of us actually use bread and pasta to cope with stress. When it comes to candy, however, or even fruits and honey, these all can make you more stressed in the short term. Be aware of that and don't believe me, you can check this for yourself. Artificial sweeteners like Splenda are another thing that I want you to be aware of. They are both horrible for your anxiety in the short term and in the long run. In the short term, you can feel it immediately after you drink some diet soda and in the long run, the artificial sweeteners destroy your gut. Of course, there is a big difference between Stevia and Splenda. So not all are equal, but in general, artificial sweeteners should be avoided. And coffee and caffeine in general makes you more anxious. But if you paid attention in this video, you know how to cope with that. If you consume some L-theanine along with your coffee or other caffeine source, you not only will feel more energetic because of the caffeine, but you also will not get the jitteriness and anxiety. Thank you for watching. I love you so much.